Now I'm going to use the cell that I just made as an example on a panel that I already got kind of pieced together. As you lay one down and the one out next to it, they'll overlap as you can already imagine. And plus, if you're watching this, you watch other YouTube videos as well. So you can re-solder down the line here. And if you ask Mark or if you look online, there's many different ways you have your solar cell layout. This here is what you'll get from Mark. Let me try to hold the camera steady. Uh, but just simple wiring diagram along with the one-way diode that you'll need on the positive line. That way it all flows through one way. As you can see here, I have the negative side starting. This here bus wire is attached to the front tabs hanging down. I snip those off, fold them in over, added some extra solder. It's not focusing. But then went ahead and linked each cell, just like that, up towards the back. It has the back part bridged over, connected with the front ones. When it comes on, back down, back around, bridged over, and across. With 6x6 six six cells, it's best for a 12-volt system to have 36 cells. You can have 4x9 or 6x6. Six six. I figured, I called around and the 6x6 six six size glass was cheaper. So I got the frame from Mark uh, to work with that there. And after you have your cells aligned, and I will show you how to hook up a little conjunction box with power. That is what I'm working on here. I'm using 10 gauge wire. With the 10 gauge wire, I have a piece of the bus tab hooked around the wire in the middle and folded around and soldered onto it because I will fold the little lip of this hair over. Uh, let me find the tool here real quick. I'll fold it over right about there. As you can see that there. And I will hook this here into the negative bus side. Just hook it up and then solder it and attach it there. And I want to have a little conjunction box right down here. And I'm going to do the same with the positive side. But I also have to have the one-way diode hooked up to it as well. Let me get those connected and I'll show you a picture of it. Alright, as you're hooking it up, remember your diode is like a T. Uh, flows from the bottom of the T towards the top. You can see the marker on it, which way it flows. And you can solder these together. Or you can use a little adapter as well. This here, I'll place where it's all right about there. And cram that one all the way up in there and crimp it down. And remember, to test it out, after you crimp it to make sure it has a good connection, I hook the ground up towards the top where it'll go through the diode. And meter says nothing right now at the moment. Infinity resistance hook up to here and you should have some resistance that's that's fine for a diode and so now you can go ahead and connect to the panel after you get the through I like to use a little bit of Loctite I like to use a little bit of Loctite to put on the nut so it stays on then after you fold the little bus tabs over the other bar, heat up the soldering iron and add a little extra solder on both sides.
Now after you have them all soldered together, make sure you have your cells where you want them lined up around the border. And if some are kind of popped up, or they have bigger spit gaps, you can add a little weight on top and add a little silicone cock in the corner to help hold it down and also put a border cock around so that way you waste less of your cell stuff. And I got a couple cells that are popped up a little bit right here a little bit. I'll go ahead and weight those down and go from there. As you can see with these here, I got them off eBay really cheap. But it looks like the dude poured some out of all of them. A lot more out of this one than the other ones. I will not be buying from him ever again. But to start, you mix a little bottle in the big bottle, start with the screwdriver, then start pouring. I like to start to pour in the middle of the cracks because it needs to go underneath the cells. Pour it up and on down. Can't do this with one hand. Well, now after using the Solar Tide uh, 384, I'll use the Clear from ML Solar. It takes a lot longer set up, but you have a lot more time to work with it. This hair was setting up before I had a chance to kind of spread it out with a piece of cardboard. See how it started to get all gooey. I don't have a vibrating table like Mark does. But I do have an air compressor that I'm going to drain out the air so it vibrates more of the bubble sound. Now as you can see, the stuff dried up way too quick before I had time to work with it. Uh, some places where it did not get too far in, all around the backside with some clear silicone. Looks white now, but it'll dry clear. Uh, just to whenever I put the other clear, the other white backing on top of the clear, that way the white does not seep through and cover up part of the cells. This here, the clear silicone will dry clear, so it shouldn't hurt it too much. The main thing is you're just protecting the cells from moisture, uh, getting in there from rain and all types of stuff. Uh, it looks horrible, but it'll still work, though. Okay, now after I poured the white coating on, the white coating's about dry. You still see where there's cracks from the clear that it dried too quick to fill up all the gaps. It's not really too bad except for a few spots. But you live and you learn. I don't think I will be using Solar Tie 384 anymore. But I still have more panels to build, and I'll still slap this uh, this one on the roof. So I mean, nothing's getting mad. But uh, I've got another one here going to be working on, and then all after that one there going to be working on a third. Third, I'm going to try with two pieces of glass where the cells are sandwiched between. You know, some people say, which works best, something like that. As you can see for yourself, this stuff is hard to work with. I mean, unless it's for you have multiple people or something, it might work better with smaller cells, getting up in between them. But as far as bigger cells, 
it, I mean, it starts it up like, you know, before you get done pouring it out of the end of the bottle, out just that quick. But uh, the other type from ML Solar, it takes like about a week before it sets up all the way. So you'll definitely have enough time to get all the bubbles out. And you won't have gobs like that if you do like a light coating backing. So I'll put this up here, let it bake up there for about, I don't know, a good week. Make sure it's nice and cured before I flip it over and hang it on the roof. Feel free to leave comments, questions, blah, blah, blah.